History. Nobody likes history. Actually, to be honest, I, I don't mind it. Ancient Egypt? It's cool stuff. I remember when I was in high school, I had a fight with my parents over money. I didn't want to go in for a shift at the job that I was doing part-time. I mean, I just hated the job. The hours passed so slowly, and it just seemed like a complete waste of my time to be there. I felt unproductive and unmotivated. I didn't understand why money had value. To me, it just seemed like an imaginary number on a computer screen that everyone spent the majority of their time on Earth working for. It just made no sense. Why couldn't we just live in a utopia where there was no money? Why couldn't we spend our time not working for money, but instead working for solving world problems and self-actualization? I was a little naive. I argued and argued with my parents. I didn't want anything to do with money. All of this didn't really click for me until I understood why money existed in the first place. Once I had a grasp on that, I realized that it wasn't actually about money at all. To understand why money exists as it does today, let's go back in time to the dawn of humanity. As far as we know, as long as we humans have existed, so has a form of trade alongside us, bartering. Bartering is simply the process of trading one thing directly for another. I remember when I was quite young, maybe like 10 years old, my friends and I would ride our bikes around town. We were the neighborhood biker gang. After a nice day riding our bikes around town, my friends and I would go to the convenience store that was just down the street from my house. And we would buy some candy and maybe one of those little chubby soda pops. Yeah. My friends and I like to trade our candy. I guess bartering's in our DNA. The aim of bartering was to Go and get something that you were specifically looking for by offering something to that person, either a good or a service that you could provide, and you would hope that they would take this good or service in exchange for the thing that they had that you wanted. This kind of trade worked in a wide range of scenarios, and it's actually still in place in some areas of the world today. It was pretty flexible and allowed many different things to be traded in different types of scenarios because it was kind of subjective. You could negotiate. But bartering had a pretty big problem. What if no one wanted my sour watermelon? Or if somebody did want them, but they didn't have the candy that I wanted in exchange for it? It was too specific. To solve this problem, humanity needed something a little different. We needed something that could allow exchange to happen easier. So, fast forward to around 9000 BC. Humans start farming crops and livestock and using that to trade. Food is universally valuable. So crops and livestock started becoming the item that communities would trade amongst each other. And through this it became a medium of exchange because it facilitated the transfer of goods and services from one hand to another. And it did this pretty effectively because livestock and crops were universally valuable because they were food. So this was a little bit better, but still not perfect. And that's because it was still pretty subjective. How many cows would you trade for how many tools? Each trade between two different people would be different. You would never have the same exact trade. And there's another problem. Crops and livestock can unfortunately die. They're not exactly indestructible thereby destroying their value. Introducing the cowrie shell. At about 1300 BC, 
we started using these little shells to trade in areas like ancient China, India, and Africa. Instead of having to trade animals or crops, cowrie shells could be traded for almost anything, which meant that it was much easier to link two people together to complete a trade. On top of that, cowrie shells had a longer shelf life, let's say, than a cow or a wheat plant, but they still weren't indestructible per se. Fortunately, about 300 years later, China actually created the first coin. This advanced upon the cowrie shell as it was something that could be produced by the nation, so it was more standardized and therefore easily traded amongst many people. So this was great, but China would go on to figure out something even better. Now, a merchant trying to carry around a large quantity of coins was probably pretty annoying, especially if they had to travel long distances. So they decided to create a system whereby a merchant could get a note, and this note would allow them to redeem it for the specified amount of coins in return for the note. So since this note was widely accepted because its value could be traded for the coins, merchants could then just travel with these notes instead of having to haul around huge bags of coins everywhere. What's interesting is the rest of the world took quite a while to kind of catch on to the idea that China had started here. Even though there had been travelers like Marco Polo who visited Asia um, in the 12th century, Europe didn't actually adopt this system of money until later in the 16th century. But once Europe was on board with the paper version of money, it kind of then became the worldwide standard for trading money amongst different people or even different countries. And this was because these banknotes were accepted for uh, the same quantity that they indicated in terms of the precious metals that they could be redeemed for essentially. So everyone knew that these notes had value that was linked to something uh, precious. In Europe and then later America, they actually had something that was called the gold standard. Now the gold standard meant that your money could be brought to a bank and essentially converted for the corresponding amount of gold. So all the bills in circulation were backed by physical gold that you could redeem your money for. This made sense because without something backing the notes, why would people be willing to just trade these notes that had no intrinsic value on their own? Well, slowly over time, these notes started to lose their gold backing. In 1933, the United States actually dropped the gold standard as we kind of entered into a new age. The paper money we had been trading up until this point allowed for massive changes in society. It allowed for cooperation and interaction at an unprecedented scale. So over time, we became less and less concerned with the actual value of money and what money was tied to, and more concerned with the abilities of interaction and cooperation and thus the digital age was ushered in. With the gold standard gone, the only thing that made money valuable was the trust of every citizen that money would be accepted as a means of payment. And that trust ultimately allowed for us to arrive here. Money is now just essentially numbers in a computer database. It seems like the concept of money is now so far gone from the original concept of crops and livestock. Or is it? 
If we look back at the whole story, we can actually see that there's a common thread, interaction and cooperation. As money evolved, so did our ability to interact with one another. What started out as just trading between small communities eventually evolved into the entire planet being able to trade things together electronically in an instant. Now, perhaps you see this as a bad thing. Perhaps you look at the massive inequality of wealth in the world or see how we treat the environment when we're just purely seeking profit and think that this all wouldn't be the case if we didn't have money. And you might even be right. But if money enables us to cooperate at such an unprecedented rate, isn't that exactly how we solve large problems? And if money is just an enabler, that it's neutral itself, doesn't that mean that any outcomes directly related to money are because of us behaving in negative ways? Are we just pointing our finger at the symptom while ignoring the root cause? I think it's something worth thinking about. Hey, this is only the second video on my channel, so if you liked what you saw, maybe go ahead and hit the subscribe button right there. Or if you want to know what my channel is all about, you can watch my very first video right here. Have you, have you hit a, a button yet? It's okay. I can wait.